Hi, I'm Doug McKinley, and you're watching Adorama TV. As you can see from behind me, we're in central London, on the banks of the River Thames. Great architecture, great history, perfect for making great panoramic pictures. Adorama TV presents Stay Focused with Doug McKinley. Hi, I'm Doug McKinley, and you're watching Adorama TV. Today we're in central London, along the banks of the River Thames. What we're going to do today is look at some tips on how to get really good panoramic pictures. Now, it's a perfect storm right now between photographic equipment and computing software. In pre-digital days, getting panoramas often meant buying a very expensive uh, equipment or spending hours and hours in the darkroom trying to stitch exposures together onto photographic paper. In essence, we still do that, but we do it in the computer now, where it's a lot faster and a lot cleaner. Now, the first thing about any successful panoramic photo expedition is finding your location. It can be anything, really, anything you find interesting, as long as it's a nice long sweep. Now, for us today, we're on the banks of the River Thames, and behind me across the river, you've got Tower Bridge, the Tower of London, and the, the uh, buildings of the City of London. This is going to be our subject for our first panoramic shot. So, for sure, making panoramic pictures has become a lot easier in recent years better cameras, better software, etc. But one of the first things you really got to think about is you need a good, solid, stabilized position to shoot from, which means a good tripod, preferably one that's got a, a uh, bubble, a leveling bubble on it built into it, and a good head, either a pan head or, like this one, a ball head. Like all landscape photography, because let's face it, panoramics are just big landscapes, there's about three things you have to remember. First, white balance can be set to auto, and you can always adjust in the computer. Make sure everything's on manual, including the focus. Shooting in manual mode and in manual focus. Just make sure you check your focus before you start shooting. And shoot in RAW, because with RAW files, you've got much, much more flexibility in the computer. Little tiny mistakes are easily fixed. With JPEGs, not so easy. Let's get shooting. Now, that your settings, of course, are going to be subject to the lighting conditions, and they will change. Now, we want some decent depth of field, right? So, because we're on a tripod, we can shoot around f8 to f11, I think. That will give us enough depth of field for a lot of uh, clarity from the foreground to, the, to, the, to infinity. And the shutter speed will be whatever it is. So, for, the instance, for instance, for these shots, it was uh, f11 at about uh, 1 60 of a second. So that's our first series of pictures for, for our first panorama. Now the reason why um, I'm shooting vertically rather than horizontal, like this, is uh, sure, sure, horizontal you're going to use less images, but be faster as well. So for quick panoramas, that's a good way of doing it. But the resolution will not be as good as if you shoot them uh, vertically, the way we just did. So I suggest if you want really good files, big, big files, shoot vertically. Also, when it comes to uh, darkroom work, the computer darkroom work, is that you need some room to crop because as this picture stitched together in the, in the photo merge in Photoshop, it's gonna look a little jagged on the tops and bottoms. You have to crop all that, all that waste out. And if you shoot vertically, you can leave a little bit of air above and below, or sorry, above and below your picture, uh, which will give you room to crop better. London is such a great city, it's always changing. The skyline seems to change every month. And as a photographer, it's brilliant. But I see a really good spot over by Tower Bridge. We're gonna head over there now. Let me put this stuff away. So, the next thing we have to think about is lens choices. Always the big question. Now, I tend to stay away from wide-angle lenses when doing panoramas because they distort a lot and it can be really problematic once you're in the computer. So my choices are a 50mm and probably a short zoom, 2470 up to an 80 to 200 zoom. It's got a little more control with these lenses. Now, 
In keeping with that, I know I always bang on about using your tripod as much as you possibly can, but sometimes it's not possible. So handhelds, handheld panoramics can be done. There's just a couple of things you have to think about, keep in mind. We're gonna choose this 2470. First and foremost, really, is make sure that you've got enough shutter speed to avoid any kind of camera shake. So you're looking at around 250-ish. Uh, in conjunction with that, make sure you've got enough depth of field to give yourself enough focus, depth of focus. Just before I continue with this shot, creating this panorama, I suggest you set uh, everything to manual, including your focus. So set your focus in auto and then switch it off to, to manual. That way you, your focus won't jump in and out as you swing the camera around. Now you want to get nice and stable. So when you've got your camera cradled in your hands, firmly but gently, elbows in, nice and tucked in, give you some stability. 